What's up, YouTube? Um, since Shimmering Skies comes out this week, uh, I wanted to do a quick uh, tier list. Um, and I'm going to just do uh, legendary and uh, super rares, since those are probably going to be the most um, meta relevant. Uh, maybe I'll do one later with uh, uncommons or, or rares. Um, but I thought I would start with legendary and uh, uh, super rares um, and talk a little bit about uh, about them and about um, my thoughts on the cards uh, and what I'm excited to test, what I'm not excited to test, um, and share that with you. So uh, I'm gonna pull up Dreamborn just so we can like look at the cards uh, kind of as we go and. Um, you know, my thought is uh, we can look at them and then uh, flip over and, and actually rank them. Uh, Shimmering Skies. And we're going to start at the legendary slot. All right. Uh, the first one up is Ana. So Ana's ability reads, when you play this character, you may pay two ink to choose one. Each opponent chooses and discards a card. Chosen character gets plus two strength and banish chosen character. So three cost card to play. You have to pay two. So that essentially makes it uh, a five cost to get the benefit. Um, I don't know if there are any relevant uh, shift targets offhand. I, I think there's a new on a shift in purple um, that might be relevant. I, I don't think we have any other on a shift um, target. So really, you're not going to be playing this before turn five, um, you know, uh, to get any sort of a benefit from it. Um, what I will say is that cards that are flexible like this um, tend to be good. Um, I don't know if these specific benefits are going to be that good. Um, she does not have great stats, especially, you know, if you're paying five ink for that plus uh, the the benefit, um, you're kind of getting a pretty lackluster body. Um, so I'm not convinced um, that Ana will see uh, very much play. Um, you know, I, I think it's a beautiful card, uh, but I just am not convinced that it's going to see much play. Um, so I'm going to start off by, uh, putting this one in C tier. Um, I just, I, I'm not convinced that this card is going to make much of an impact on the meta. Second, uh, Arthur. So Arthur's ability reads, when you play this character, chosen character gains challenger two and resist two and can challenge ready characters this turn. That seems pretty powerful, uh, I think, overall. Um, gaining challenger two plus resist two plus being able to challenge ready characters um, seems pretty good. Uh, I think what really hurts this card is its uninkability. Um, and how expensive it is. It's a seven drop, uh, you know, enter the battlefield effects are great. It does quest for three, which is pretty good. Um, but that three, six stat line is a hard sell, I think. Um, three, six stat line, uh, you know, it, it dies to Medusa, everything dies to Medusa, you know, so we still find ways to play things, but you're going to have to shift this in and uh, to really get you know, good early consistency from it. And if we're shifting it in on five, like what targets are we hoping to hit, um, you know, with with it uh, on the turn that we play it? You know, what ready characters are we hoping to hit? Um, you know, it, it might come in handy, you know, end game to help you kind of clear out a threat that uh, is threatening to, to quest when the score is tight. But um, I'm not super convinced uh, on this card. Um, I think it might see some, you know, niche usage, but I, I don't think it will be a, uh, a staple. And it, it certainly won't be, you know, one of these like $40 cards uh, that we see with, you know, Robin Hood or um, Diablo or, or um, Beast or, or something like that. 
Camilo Madrigal. Uh, whenever this character quests, you may gain lore equal to lore of chosen other character of yours. Return that character to your hand. So we've got a little bit of bounce. We've got, um, you know, uh, a three seven stat line. So, um, you know, against non Ruby decks, it's going to be pretty hard to remove uh, with it having seven willpower. Um, I think, you know, what characters are you looking to quest and kind of steal um, their uh, lore total? Um, you know, the ones that kind of immediately come to mind are uh, some of the, like, dime targets. Um, but Blurple has not really been a uh, competitive color set. I think there are um, a lot of cards that might make it more competitive this set. Um, but I, I just, I'm not quite sure who the targets are for this. It's also, it comes out on six. Um you know, B prep is the next turn uh, in a lot of cases, or even earlier if you're playing, you know, red blue. Um, so it has to stick around to be able to quest, and um, I don't know if it's going to get that value. Um, so uh, maybe it'll, you know, be in a rogue deck, but I, I think more likely it's. Uh, gonna have to be something that you know you really have to build around um, to have some sort of a, a meme potential. All right, Clarabelle. Um, I actually think Clarabelle is pretty good. Um, it's expensive, but it's inkable, right? And we know that expensive cards, if they're inkable, are playable, right? Um, people still play Maleficent Dragon because it's uh, it's inkable, it's a nine cost, and it's pretty powerful. I think her effect is very powerful. Her, her stats are good. Um, she's a 5-6, so, you know, she's well out of Medusa territory. Um, you can shift her in on 5, you know, and you're not going to have to worry about B prep for a little bit. Um, she's going to have to be challenged in likely two characters, and she's going to be able to probably kill both of them. You know, she takes out a Maui in a trade. Um so that all seems pretty positive um, to me. We do have a new one drop Clarabelle um, that we can shift her on in green. So uh, I think Clarabelle is going to be pretty good. I think she's also going to help uh, green with uh, draw power. You know, if you don't want to play Diablo um, because so many people are teched for it. Um, this ability of being able to like draw up to your opponent's cards at the end of um, the turn, I think is pretty powerful. We have another card that has that kind of effect on it, but it's an action. Uh, four drop on Inkable. Um, remember who you are. Uh, but uh, I think Clarabelle might be good. Um, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure what deck she's going to fit in, um, but uh, I guess we'll see, right? Like, uh, green purple kind of comes to to mind sometimes that deck can just run out of gas and and being able to have clarabelle and shift her out um you know she can sing we don't talk about bruno um she can help sing you know under the sea or or other things like that potentially so i i think there is a, a use case for her um i think shifting her out on five um you know is doable especially you know on four if you played like fox plus clarabelle and and then can shift her the next turn um that seems pretty decent to me uh let's talk about donald duck uh donald duck is an interesting character we have not really seen this like lore loss really come into the meta at all um it usually tends to be too slow um you know, I think there's a lot of aggro this set, and so maybe, <laughs> excuse me, hmm. maybe there's more of a, a chance for Donald to, to find a home this set. I think, you know, this 10 uh, lore or more, you know, opposing, or this character gets plus 6, you know, it comes down as a 9-6, like that's nothing to, to spit at. 
it's got to stick around for a turn, uh, but it, it seems like it's going to be pretty hard to remove um, other than V-Prep. Um, you know, and it does synergize with some new cards like Maximus and, of course, with Flynn. There's also a new item that kind of gives that Flynn effect. Um, so it is, I think, a potential that it, it could have an impact, but I think we don't have a lot of good shift targets um, for it. Shift four is not going to be very relevant. It's more likely you're going to play this on five. Um, and just play it down and, and hope it survives until the next turn to be able to help clear a location or something. Um, I don't think it really is going to replace Mali Index um, in that 5 drop to be able to help you clear uh, a location or a, a big creature um, because it doesn't have Rush. So, um, you know, I think TBD um, on it, but uh, I think, you know, we might see it as a tech card um, in a location-heavy meta. Um, especially with, um, you know, some of these locations that are getting even higher willpower now, like um, the library has eight, right? And so uh, you're going to need more than uh, Maui to be able to clear it. All right. Um, Genie. Seven drop, uninkable. While this character is exerted, opposing characters cannot ready at the start of their turn. Um, you know, we're going to see some attempts at this, um, and we're likely going to see it in a kind of blurple lockdown deck that can kind of accelerate into it. Um, you know, there's a chance you can maybe also pair it with Amethyst. Um, I think the advantage of putting this in, uh, blurple is you've got um some ward characters that you could give it you could put aurora out you could um, play the new bell to give uh it ward for a turn and really be able to kind of get its benefit um it has five costs so all of steel can remove it with um, zeus if it becomes a problem um so i think you know it, you're gonna need to see ward operating with it for it to be really beneficial um and I think for that reason, like, I don't know if it's going to be that good. Um, so I'm going to put it in meme decks for now. Uh, I could be wrong about this one. Uh, I think, you know, it, it could be very good in Blurple. Blurple has not really been able to kind of control the board. And, and maybe Genie is what it needs, you know. Um, uh, we'll see. Um, Jafar. I think this card is garbage. Um <laughs> Uh, maybe there's some potential here, um, because it, it's not as bad as Gantu, right? Like Gantu, I think is, you know, characters that cost three or less can't challenge this character. Um, so this is just, you can't challenge period. So it's going to shut down your Fox, um, your, your goats, your, um, you know, those decks that are relying on some of those cheaper characters to to kind of uh, control the the board, but uh, you can see here that like it's really only being brewed by two people in two different decks right now. So um, I think this card is is pretty garbage. Uh, Merlin. So Merlin uh, is really our first tutor in the game. Um, Six drop, uninkable, can shift on five. Um, there aren't a ton of relevant shift characters. I think we've got a shift uh, target that is two. Uh, and of course, we've got uh, Merlin Goat and Merlin Rabbit. Um, but you probably are not going to want to shift it on to those. Um, I think, you know, it, it could uh, kind of show up in this blurple shell again because you can kind of accelerate into it. You can. Uh, tutor, you can shift him in, you can find a, a card that is relevant, um, you know, maybe find a dime or find uh, Tamatoa or, you know, um, a Haram if you really need, you know, card draw or, or something like that, right? Um, you know, finding a card is really good. Um, I think this card is better than a lot of things, and, and I do think it will find a home in a meta deck. Um, at least on some level. Uh, Mirabelle. I like Mirabelle. 
um, a lot. I don't think the card is super viable. Um, having to have five or more characters in play is a lot of characters. So it, it could be a finisher in some aggro decks, um, but it's just going to sit in your hand for the majority of the game, and then you slam it down, and then, you know, uh, y I guess you really only need to quest off of it once, right? Because it should get you over the line. I think the worry is uh, we're a turn away from B prep, you know, potentially. So you're only really going to get that one turn of value out of it before it's immediately removed. It does die to Zeus. It dies to, you know, some of those other kind of uh, hard removal. It doesn't die to strength based removal. So it would need to be ice blocked down. Um, you know, I, I think there's a good chance that if it hits the. Um, the board, you know, it will get to, to quest. Um, I'm excited to test it in this shell. So um, this shell uh, runs Queen Disguise Peddler, and it's something I've been wanting to try for a while um, to try to make her viable, to make her work, um, and I've just not been able to do it. But uh, I, it, it's possible. It's possible it could work this set. Um, you know, Queen, Disguise, Peddler, Discard, Mirabelle, that's five lore. That's a massive jump. You know, uh, we might be able to protect the Queen with a Simba Bodyguard or um, or something else uh, to try to be able to do it again and, and play, um, you know, some sort of card to be able to return uh, Mirabelle to our hand. You know, that's why part of your world is here. That's... Um, that's you know would be kind of the goal uh, there, um, or be our guest to try to find a second one, um, but it's a very very build around card. I don't think it's a card that is just good that will be in a lot of decks. Um, you know, uh, potentially that deck is good, but it is going to be kind of a rogue deck. It, it's it's going to be hard for it to find a home. Um. I don't mean to be so negative on these uh, legendary cards. I just I don't think the majority of them are going to see much play. Mufasa. Um, eight cost, uninkable. When you play this character, exert all cards in your inkwell, then return two cards at random from your inkwell to your hand. Whenever this character quests, ready all cards in your inkwell. Um, what's interesting about this for me is in Sapphire Steel, um, we have all ended up with bricked hands um, at various times. And we've had to ink Tamatoa. And we don't want to do it, but we have to, right? Uh, because otherwise, we're just not advancing our ink pool, and we're just going to fall way, way, way behind. But sometimes you end up in a case where, like, okay, three of my Tamatoa are in uh, my inkwell, and I only have one more left in the deck. And... Mufasa is the first card, the first chance we have to be able to return something from your inkwell to your hand. Um, and I think that's the real benefit, right? Like we're going to be ramping hard in blue. And um, I think this is the real benefit. This, like whenever this character quest ready all cards in your inkwell, yeah, there's some com kind of combo potential there um, that could be pretty disgusting. Um, but, you know, if you get that off once, you're going to be just ecstatic. But I think the real reason to play this is this here, to be able to try to grab that dime that you quilled away or grab that Tomatoa that you inked on turn one uh, to try to help you get over the, f the finish line in these item decks, the, you, the red item deck and the, um, the Sapphire Steel uh, item deck. So I think it's got potential. I think it's probably going to be like a, a one of or a two of. Um, I think it will be meta relevant, um, but I don't know if it will be meta defining. This brings us to Robin Hood. Um, I actually really like the the look of this Robin Hood. I've been testing him a little bit in a amber uh, shell, uh, in kind of a song shell with Ariel, um, and running a bunch of songs. Uh, you know. I think the problem is we don't have very good songs in uh, Amber Ruby. So, you know, what other shells could you put it in? You could put it in, you know, maybe a green red shell uh, with some of the songs there and run Ursula Deceiver of All and, um, you know, run a, a kind of song package there. 
Um, he can sing up to to six, so he can sing Bruno. He can sing, you know, some of the those five drop songs. In in red, this like singer six, uh, you know, being able to sing up to cost six is not very relevant. Um, you know, we've got Pirate's Life, and that's kind of about it. There's Blast from the Past, I think, you know, is is a, a new song that's at the five drop level. But there's just not enough songs, I think, for him to really be good. Um, but I think in the future, uh, as we get more songs, um, he's only going to go up. I think right now it, it's going to be pretty niche um, usage, but I think as we add more songs, uh he's just going to get better and better. Finally, uh, Naveen, um, I'm just going to put this card in meta defining. I think it's the only meta defining card, um, of the set when it comes to, uh, the, the legendary cards. Um, you know, and it's interesting the the prices, you know, these pre-order prices are, are never correct, but, uh, Merlin, you know, is pretty high. Mufasa is pretty high. Uh, people don't think Naveen's going to have as much of an impact, um, you know, but I think he's got to be good in Steel Song, right? Playing songs for free is good. Playing songs for free is very good. He can sing all of the relevant songs in Steel Song. He can sing Whole New World. He can sing Swords for free. Um, and that's good, right? Like, yes, it's going to take two cards from your hand, but if you're playing Wheel and you just are refreshing yourself, who cares? Like, who cares about that card disadvantage and spending two cards? If you can play him and play grab your swords and deal with your opponent's board on four um, in Steel Song and get to um, swords one turn earlier, if you missed some of your shift lines to be able to sing swords and deal with an aggro board, like, that seems good, right? He's a 3 3 body, he's a decent body, quest for two. Um, I've been doing a little bit of testing with him, and, and I think he's good. Um, I think he's going to be very, very good. So uh, for me, that's where I've kind of landed on uh, the the legendaries for this set. Um, you know, I, I think we'll see, you know, in the long term if, if this is correct or not. But uh, I do think it's very, very good. Um, and I think uh, he will find a home in, in decks. He's also, you know, he's going to be good in that shell. He's going to be good in the kind of amber green under the sea shell that, um, you know, people ran uh, towards the end of the last set. So um, he's going to be good. He's going to be good in multiple sets, I think. All right. Uh, switching over to super rares. Shimmering Skies, Rarity, uh, Super Rare. All right. Um, starting with an Amber. Uh, let me just sort these by color. Blast from the Past. Uh, name a card. Return all character cards with that name from your discard to your hand. Um, it's a six drop uninkable song. Um, so, you know, six, uh, Naveen comes to mind that Robin Hood comes to mind. So th this does kind of synergize with those, um, return all cards with that name. Um, you know, we often have decks that don't run a ton of the same named character. So, uh, I'm not quite sure what deck it kind of fits into, um, it could fit into Steel Song. It could fit into, you know, uh, a Amber Emerald, uh, you know, grabbing Ursula's potentially, you know, if you're running Deceiver of All, Deceiver, um, Ursula Vanessa, right? Like that's a good number of Ursula's to try to pull back to your hand and, and kind of refresh your hand that way. Um, but uh, I think at this point, um, this card is, is only going to see some like, pretty niche use, uh, or maybe even just rogue deck potential. Um, I don't think this card is going to be very good. Daisy. Need I say more? 
Daisy is going to change the format as we know it. It's a 1-4 on one. Uh, I think everyone is aware of of Daisy and how Daisy is going to affect the format. Whenever this character quests, each opponent reveals the top card of their deck. If it's a character card, they may put it in their hand. Otherwise, they put it on the bottom of their deck. Um, so it's going to filter away answers um, to be able to remove it. And that in and of itself is very powerful. It's also a 1-4. It's a big butt, especially on one. Every deck is trying to have the answer, how do I deal with Daisy? How do I answer Daisy? How do I answer Daisy on two? If you don't have an answer for Daisy on two, you are going to struggle this set, I think. S tier. Elsa. Um, this card is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, with it being a 2-5, um, you know, 2 strength is not very much, but uh, we have ways of kind of boosting that up um, in Ruby Amethyst, uh, especially, um, you know, and, and increasing her strength. Uh, Rush on a character is always very strong. Um, being a five drop, um, you know, it, it can come in, it can make an impact, it can hit Diablo, it can, um, you know, hit other characters and immediately banish them. Um, I worry if it's a little bit too expensive, um, but I think this card overall is very good. I think its effect when you play this character, exert a chosen opposing character, is just massively important. Um, I think that will win you games, and so I think I think we're going to see this card in Ruby Amethyst this set. I think it's definitely meta relevant. I don't know if it's meta defining, um, but I think it's very good. Grumpy. While one of your knight characters is at a location, that character gains resist two. Uh, during your turn, this character gains evasive. So a three one, so it can trade with Diablo, it can kill Diablo, it can um, remove uh, Diablo at uh, Hidden Cove, which is, is relevant, at least um, last set. I don't know if it'll be relevant this set, um, but I don't think this card is very good. Um, I think it's just going to sit in binders. Kronk, head of security. Uh, during your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you may play a character with cost five or less for free. Playing things for free is pretty great. Um, seven drop uninkable, not great. Uh, shift five, we don't really have... Uh, a lot of good shift targets for Kronk, uh, I don't think. So uh, I don't think this card will see much play. Um, you know, potentially it'll show up in a rogue deck, maybe a, a Mufasa, you know, steel um, deck of, of some sort that allows you to cheat out characters. Um, you know, I, there's some potential there, you know, potentially, but um, I, I don't think it'll see much play. Cusco, Selfish Emperor. When you play this character, you may put chosen item or location into its player's inkwell, face down, and exerted. Uh, that's out placement. And then its second ability, by invite only, exert four ink. Your other characters uh, gain resist one until the start of your next turn. I don't think the second ability is going to be very relevant. Quest for two, does die to Medusa. It's a six drop, it's inkable. And this solves a very big problem for uh, Sapphire decks. Sapphire decks have really struggled in the mirror because Beast Hardheaded could uh, get rid of Lucky Dime, but then it just goes into the discard, Tomatoa Quest, brings it back, you play it, you exert it, game over, right? It doesn't actually solve the problem of Dime. Um, dime could still be exerted, and Dime uh, you know, could still come back in and make an impact in the game. Putting a card into your inkwell, that is a massive effect. There is only one way to get a card out of the inkwell, and that's Mufasa, right? So this is going to help in mirror matches. It's going to help uh, Sapphire Steel be better against, uh, you know, Red Blue. Of course, they're probably going to play it too, which is going to help them be better uh, against Sapphire Steel. Um, it's going to help uh, deal with 
uh, Prince John's Mirror if that card ends up making it into the meta. Um, but I think this card is is definitely going to be meta relevant, and I think it is going to define uh, Sapphire decks this set. Uh, I think that combined with the two cost action that does the, the same effect and put something into the inkwell, um, I think that is going to define whether Sapphire is good or bad this set. I think you will have to play this card. Madame Mim. Uh, this card acts like a lot of uh, Madame Mim characters. It's got a much bigger body. It's a 3-7 doesn't have rush so it's more akin to snake you have to play it set it up and then use it the following turn um, but I, I think this card uh, could be quite good I, I think especially in an aggressive meta where we need to deal with daisies um, being able to bounce something back to your hand being able to bounce a fox back um, while still developing your board state um, to clear damage so you can replay fox the following um, you know hand uh, is really good. Being able to banish uh, a character, uh, take damage, and then at the beginning of your next turn, uh, move those two damage counters to another character, that seems pretty good. Um, so it does have to stick around till its next uh, turn, but I think I think Teeth and Ambitions is going to be a card that we're going to see Ruby Amethyst play this set uh, to deal with the amount of early aggression. I think we're going to see the one drops come back, the one three one drops, um, and uh, you know, singing teeth and then putting two damage on Mim uh, that you can then move next turn, uh, I think is going to be pretty good into um, those aggressive decks, right? It, it basically allows us to play teeth without the downside, right? Those aggro decks are not going to be able to take out Mim, and so we're going to be able to move that two damage uh, the next turn and be able to do that damage. So, I think this card's going to be pretty good. I know um, some people are a little bit down on it, uh, but I think it's going to be quite good. Mini Mouse, Shift 4, uh, 5 drop, 4-4, four, four, Quest for 2, good body, um, good stats, uh, you know, and Quest for 2 is great. When you play this character, if you used Shift to play her, you may search your deck for a character card, reveal that card to all players, shuffle your deck, and put that card on top. So a kind of, you know, tutor card as well, um, only relevant if you shift it in. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think this card potentially sees play in uh, Mufasa. Now, if you flip it with Mufasa, you don't get to shift it necessarily. Um, you know, so that's not great, but... Uh, it is a 4-4 four, four body that quests for two, and I think you're going to be pretty happy with that pressure in a, in a Mufasa list. Um, you know, I think TBD, if Mufasa will kind of reach the meta in, in some sort of way this set, but um, I think this deck could, or this card could see some play, but I think it is going to be pretty niche. Maximus. At the end of your turn, if you have any characters in play with 5 strength or more, gain 2 lore. If you have any in play with 10 or more, gain 5 lore instead. Um, I am excited to test this card. I have not really been able to test it at all yet. Um, but uh, I think it could be good, um, potentially. I'll have to take a little bit more of a look and, and see where it's being played. I think Mufasa makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you're going to have Maui uh, that is going to trigger it. You're going to have Chernabog that will trigger um, it. You know, uh, you'll have the Queen, so you can kind of add strength in places to get yourself to 10. You know, Queen plus Maui gets to 10. Um, so I, I think it could be good. I, I, uh, I don't know for sure, but uh, I think it could see some kind of meta uh usage in in niche scenarios all right um mother gothel i'm very excited about this card um this is one of my favorite cards of the set uh i'm at least putting it in a tier um i don't know if it'll be meta defining um but i know it will be for me um the two drop uh mother gothel um, that uh, is relevant and that you can shift on, on top of uh, her with 
um, allows you to play it for two, and then you can also pay three to bounce something and give the mother knows best effect. Um, that's pretty powerful in and of itself. Then you can shift this on top of it on turn four, make them bounce something else to their hand. Uh, it's kind of more like the Tremaine effect where they get to choose, but in some ways that's good. It gets around Ward, it gets around, um, you know, I had a game fairly recently in testing where I was able to bounce uh, an opposing copy of the Muses back to their hand, and that felt really big, right? A four cost Muses, it's, it, it's really big, and you know, it, this can hit characters like Tamatoa um, when it hits the, the board, if it's the only thing um, on the board. So um, I think this card is really, really good. Um, it's a 4-6. It's got a great body. It trades very well into a lot of things when it gets attacked. It quests for two. It is a six-cost card, so it can sing uh, relevant songs. Um, uh, I'm playing this in a, in a mill deck, in a emerald steel deck and it can sing whole new world it can sing grab your swords um and so the fact that i can shift it out on four and sing those uh is is quite relevant um there are games where i've shifted it out sung we don't talk about bruno while having uh the muses on board and that results in them bouncing three cards back to their hand, right? And discarding one. Uh, I trigger Muses. I uh, Bruno something back to their hand and the Mother Gothel effect. Um, it's just very powerful. Uh, you shift this out. Um, it, they bounce something back to their hand. You sing Whole New World. Now that, ca that card that you needed to deal with is now in their discard right immediately, right? There's no way for them to replay it. Um, it's really, really good. Um, and I think, you know, it makes Mill relevant uh, in the meta for the first time. And uh, for that alone, uh, it's, it's a really, really powerful card. I don't know if it's going to see play in other decks, um, you know, in a more kind of general uh, Emerald Steel list, but it is... It's nuts. It's just insane. I love that card. All right, Pete. Uh, when you play this character, if you have another character named Pete in play, you may banish chosen opposing character. I don't think this is very good. It's a seven drop. You've got to have other Pete's on board. It's very conditional. It does have a great body, six six, um, quest for two, but I, I don't think this card will see play. Uh, Prince John. Uh, this is the card that's in the Villainous um, set uh, that you can get the alternate art for. Um, exert this character play an item uh, from your hand or discard with cost five or less from for free. Uh, playing things for free is very good. Um, you know, it requires items being in your discard, so it, it's going to go into one of these kind of steel decks. Uh, or Steel Sapphire or, or um, Sapphire Ruby. Uh, you know, I, I think there's some synergy with the Queen um, potentially and just item spam, just kind of spamming the board with a bunch of items and then paying that off with Ariel, uh, Tamatoa, you know. Um, I, I think one of the ways in which this is relevant is um, the Ariel from set one where it can re-ready itself when you play an item. You know, if we have ways to play items for free from our discard, even if it's a one-cost item, um, it allows us to re-ready Ariel and then quest her again, especially if we've boosted her uh, ability to quest with things like Eye of the Fates, uh, the new medallion from this set, etc. Um, so I've been testing Ariel OTK a little bit. Um, I haven't started testing this card in it, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to give it a shot there. I, I think it will be very uh, niche or, or really just kind of a rogue deck um, that, you know, is not going to be a top deck, but uh, is going to be a lot of fun to play. All right, what have we got next? We've got another Prince Philip. Um, another very expensive uh, Prince Philip. Um, 
When you play this character, banish chosen opposing dragon character whenever he challenges a damaged character, ready this character after the challenge. So he's got a little bit of the kind of scar, so he's inkable. Um, you know, it can certainly help clear up, uh, you know, a, a board state that has some ag aggressive characters on it, but it does have to be a damaged character. Um, you know, he also, like, the, the dragon character might be relevant with, you know, kind of red, blue, and dragons, and, and Sisu, and Maleficent, but uh, I don't think this card is very good. I think, you know, maybe in a rogue deck, but often green is not getting um, that much ink. Uh, you're kind of stopping at five or six. Uh, scoop. Scroop. Uh, evasive, 2-1, uh, three drop. Uh, quest for two. When you play this character, you may pay three to banish chosen damaged character. So um, this card is, is pretty reminiscent of the Queen of Hearts from Floodborne um, in that, uh, you know, when you play it, it'll do something to a damaged character. I think the fact that you have to pay three is not very good. This It kind of basically turns it into a, um, a Medusa. Um, of course, it's not, you know, restricted to, uh, you know, to a certain amount of strength. But I, I don't think this card will see much play. I think its uninkability really hurts it, um, you know. I just I don't I don't think it's gonna see much play. Snow White, fair hearted, uh, five drop, three five. So it's got kind of that piglet stat line um, of being uninkable, three five. Uh, piglet didn't see much play uh, last set. This character gains resist one for each other knight you have in play. So, uh, you know, the Snow White comes with a whole bunch of seven dwarves this set, um, who have that uh, knight attribute. Um, there's a, a few other knights that are maybe relevant to, to think about. The prince kind of comes to mind, I think, as a knight. Um, but uh, I don't think this card is very good. Um, you know, maybe in a rogue deck. Uh, in casual play, you know, maybe in limited, it, it'll be very, very good um, since there's all of those dwarves this set. But I think uh, in constructed, it's, it's not going to be playable. The queen, fairest of all. Um, shift three, so early shifts are good. Uh, we know that. It has ward, uh, which is great. Um, for each other character named the queen you have in play, this character gets plus one uh, lore. So, um, you know, when we think about uh, characters called the queen, um, you know, there's not a ton that I feel like are going to be playable with this card. Um You know, we've got uh, the amber one. We've got uh, this uh, amethyst. There's a couple of amethyst ones, both of which don't see any play. Um, there is uh, the queen disguised peddler, which is in green. It's the only one in green. Um, you know, I think maybe in blurple, uh, there's a potential play with the two here and and the bulk of them, you know, here. I think. You know, more often than not, you're just going to see maybe these three get played. Um, the the two drop uh, ward zero four, uh, and then shift that into uh, this one, and then you know you've got uh, this one that also has ward. So like you could potentially kind of build up a board state of of queens. Um, you know this scry one really hasn't seen any play. This one has seen play, but only in heavy item builds in in red blue. So. I just I'm not convinced that this card is is going to make an impact at all. Um, I I think it is a meme deck if if it's any deck at all. Two more. Who's with me? Three cost inkable action. Your characters get plus two strength this turn. Whenever one of your characters with reckless challenges another character this turn, gain two lore. So. Uh, you know, this could maybe slot into uh, a Snuggly Duckling Maui build. Um, you know, the a lot of people are talking about playing the 4-2 Reckless Gaston. Um, this set to help deal with some of the, the aggro, um, you know, uh, world. But uh, it 
might see some play there, but I, I really don't think so at all. You know, maybe it, it'll see a little bit of usage, but I, I really think it more falls into this like rogue deck of challenge matters that, you know, we've been wanting to make viable for a number of sets now, but it just, it just isn't. And lastly, uh, Maleficent, Formidable Queen, uh, our first uh, shift queen for Maleficent. Shift six, you may pay six ink to play this on top of one of your other characters, Maleficent. We've got lots of Maleficent uh, relevant, um, you know, shift targets. We've got uh, the one drop. We've got uh, Maleficent Sorcerer. We've got all kinds of Maleficents to, to shift this on top of. When you play this character for each of your characters named Maleficent in play, includes herself, return a chosen opposing character's item or location with cost three or less to that player's hand. So it, it's item bounce for purple, but it doesn't hit dime. Um, and I think that's the problem, ultimately. The most relevant um, you know, uh, item is dime, um, and it can't remove that. Um, it can remove fishbone quill, uh, which is good, and try to like you know stop ramp uh, in its tracks or delay ramp. But um, I I don't think this card is very good. All right, well there you have it. Though that is my uh, my rankings for set uh, five: shimmering skies, legendary, and super rare. Um, you know, maybe we'll do another video for th the rares and uncommons. I don't think it's worth probably looking at uh, the uh, the commons, but uh, I think maybe uncommons and, and rare uh, might be worth looking at. Uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one.